All right, well, good evening and welcome to everybody who's here and uh, those who are watching us on live stream scattered about. Also, a big shout out for those who've been a bit decimated by this bug this week, which uh, I know Chris and I had it, and then we come in and find there's other people. And some of you have made it here in spite of that, so bless you. I pray that you'll feel a sense of strength and, uh, and healing today. Also, just a little shout out as well for... Um, People are suffering in the typhoon in the Philippines and hurricane in America. And I uh, just pray that all that they need will, uh, will come out to help them. So we want to con continue um, tonight with our conversation that we have really been engaged in for three weeks. Now in the first one we were talking about the difference between unity and uniformity. And last week we were talking about... Um, uh, last week we were talking about it just no community. Sorry, it just went totally out of my head. Then we're talking about community or community, as we like to call it here. Well, we wanted to move the conversation on tonight a little bit to talk about compassion, because the truth is, without a real understanding and grasp of uh, compassion. Um, you can't even help yourself. And if you learn compassion in the context of yourself, you're better equipped to help others. But the truth is, there cannot be any real unity or community without a real understanding and sense of compassion. Now, one of the good things tonight is that uh, we'll have 2Q without use. Remember, we do this because when you write the word... Q, you can't say Q without the U, and Q without U has no sound. So uh, we've got two of those tonight to, uh, to hopefully help you and bless you and, uh, and um, give you some insight into another couple of people's lives and their journey. Um, yeah, so, so I wanted to say a few words at the beginning about this. It, it's interesting that um, in the ancient book of Ecclesiastes in the Old Testament of the Bible, there's a verse that says, though one may be overpowered... Two can defend themselves, but a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Um, that's actually scientifically and, um, and, and physically actually correct. That um, When you bind a cord with three strands, the strength is absolutely incredible. And uh, it, it's something that you see cropping up, uh, particularly in the Bible. You know, the whole concept of Father, Son and Spirit is a, is, is a three-stranded cord. Uh, which when you understand how the whole thing ties together, it's not easily broken and it's something you can hold on to. You get the same thing when the Bible talks about faith, hope and love. That's a three strands of a cord, which if you've got the three working together, um, then it won't be quickly broken. The reason I raise this is because I think in the subject of compassion, we're far too often trying to deal with our own needs and the needs of others when actually we've only got one string to our bow. Or we might have two strings to our bow, which makes us able to defend a principle. But if we're going to be really strong in this area of compassion, we have to have all three. So let me just give you very quickly what I think those three are. It's compassion for others. Remember, Jesus said, love your neighbor. But it's compassion for yourself, because Jesus said, as yourself. So if you don't know how compassion works with you... To quote a phrase, you haven't got a cat in hell's chance of knowing how to bring compassion to another person's life. You'll bring something that's not really compassion because you have to have compassion for yourself. And how do you have that? Because Jesus said a new command I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. So the measure is not human love. The measure is the sacrificial love that God showed to us in Jesus. So compassion for others Compassion for self and God's compassion for me are the three strands that we want you to get tonight. Now, I want you to understand that self-compassion is not self-pity. Self-pity is a very different thing. Self-pity is the woe is me, it's all terrible, this is going to go on forever, there'll never be a solution to that. That's called self-pity. Compassion for self says, this is not good, this hurts, this is difficult... However, this is not the end of the story because there are other things that are going to be involved in the outworking of this that will help me. So let me give you a couple of brief definitions. Sympathy is the feelings of pity and sorrow for someone else's misfortune. That's sympathy. Empathy is the ability to understand 
and share the feelings of others. That's another step. Compassion, which is a noun, is a feeling of deep sympathy and sorrow for another who is stricken by misfortune, accompanied by a strong desire to alleviate suffering. That's compassion. And it comes from the Latin compassio, which is from another word, compati, which means to suffer with. I like the fact that Jesus in his compassion was not so much suffering for as he was suffering with. And that in the context of our world, God doesn't look from the outside saying, I suffered for you. He comes to the inside and says, I suffer with you. So there's one other verse in the Bible, Lamentations 3. Well, it's two verses. Lamentations 3. What a name for a book, Lamentations. Right? Because it's a lament. But this is actually, if this is a lament, it's a good lament. Because it says this, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. I want every one of you to know that if you can grasp this tonight, it might be tough, it might be bad, but you're not consumed because of the Lord's great love. It says, for his compassion never fails. They are new every morning, great is your faithfulness. And the interesting thing is that word compassions is a Hebrew word that means the womb. So what it literally is saying is that because of his great love, he will not miscarry you if you will rest in his compassion, but he'll bring you to a place of full birth and full life and full restoration. And so our evening's going to cover that tonight, and we hope that you'll learn something about the road to compassion. All right, well, we're having to cut and paste tonight. Who'd get themselves into this kind of format? So I'd like the guys just to receive the pay it forward right now, if you would. And uh, while they're doing that, we'll just continue to talk because we want to stay within our a lot of time. For those of you who would have liked more music, we apologize. Part of the team is decimated. We're also running out of time. But this is important. Now, for some of you as well, you may feel, okay, so I've listened to Amy, I've listened to, um, to Kelly, and I've, I've, I've seen some of these things. And where is God in all of this? That immediately, to me, shows a lack of compassion. That says that is their story. This is where these people are at. And sometimes we have been guilty of trying to superimpose into people's story almost a blanket of cover when actually there is no one more compassionate than God, the Father of Jesus. But then we have our lives and not everything gets fixed because you said bless you or gave a prayer. I've grown up in an environment where people would greet and, and shake hands and say, God bless you, brother, how are you? The worst thing you could ever do is say, not doing very well. Because I found in nine cases out of 10, maybe 19 cases out of 20, potentially 99 cases out of 100, that the answer not very well was not able to be embraced or, or imbibed into the conversation. And there was a quick, well, God bless you, we're praying for you. Meanwhile, the person has to go and wrestle with their issue. You see, compassion doesn't do that. Compassion says, what is it that's not going well? And how can I bring myself to feel what it is that you are going through? It's interesting that sympathy is a feeling. That's what sympathy is. It's a feeling, but compassion is an act. Sympathy is a pathy. Do you want to know another pathy? Ah, pathy. It's a pathy, right? It's a feeling. An apathy is a feeling or a lack of feeling. Compassion is an act. Think about the word com, passion. It's not something with a feeling. It's not something that just feels what is happening. It's something that has the passion to act passionately about that which you passionately made yourself willing to engage I think one of the best things that I have ever said, and it was on one of our statements, is that if you're not prepared to familiarize yourself with a person's story, do not presume yourself qualified to judge their actions. You see, compassion says we all have a story, but compassion says, may I be part of your story? May I understand your story? May I be with you, not separate 
to you. I believe the real essence of the Christian gospel is God with us. The word Emmanuel means God with us. Not God out there, not even God for us, but God with us. Emmanuel, Jesus, the one who came, is God with us, who feels what we feel, but doesn't just feel, but seeks to understand where you are. That Michael Jackson... um, a uh, song I find incredibly moving, have done for many years, because it gives an insight into a young man's struggle that said, if you knew my story, if you knew what happened to me when I was growing up, for some of you, if you knew what happened to me in my marriage, if you knew what happened when my husband left me, if you knew what happened when that person died, if only you knew... But so often we can be surface, and the gospel is not surface. The gospel is God with us. It's Jesus in the flesh relating to us, not just dying for us, but dying with us. Not just suffering for us, but suffering with us so that compassion brings into our life an understanding. And with that understanding comes healing. See, Kelly said, three years. I was in deep depression for three and a half years. But the compassion of God with me brought me through that depression because there was always a hope because I knew someone was with me and someone understood me and that my situation was not being judged, it was not being belittled, it was being understood so that life and help and hope and healing could come. There is healing for every one of your broken hearts tonight. There's healing for every one of you going through something that we can say, me too, Some people here have been through that same thing and can help you, but even more so, I believe God in Jesus and his life meant that he also too understands you. You know, I've personally encountered many people who in my darkest hour revealed their trajectory, status and reputation were much more important to them than my pain. And I've met many of them. And most of those people will leave you and betray you at that moment. I hope, first of all, that you will understand that the compassion of God that never fails, remember that word compassion means the womb of God, will not miscarry you. But also I would hope that that spirit is in this place tonight and in our hearts for one another. I like what Brenny Brown says, that rarely does the empathetic position begin with at least... Oh, well, at least you know that God loves you. You know, at least you know this is not going to last. You know, at at, at least you're still, at least least you're still alive. Those things are never helpful. They're not empathy. Empathy says, I get it, I feel it. How would you like to be in Jenny's shoes tonight, loving a sister who's lost two husbands in ten years, who the husband's wife had also died, and Jenny's sister's husband had also died. Don't come with your platitudes. Don't come with your empty words. Don't dishonor the good news that God sent in Jesus by coming with some empty thing. You have to feel and understand, but there is a healing because we have a compassionate God who feels what we feel. Compassion is what helps us to bathe in love, independent of achievement. That's what compassion does. It helps us to bathe in love, independent of achievement. Some of you tonight need to just bathe. You need to have a bath. Take a long bath, but bathe yourself in the love that is independent of achievement, which is the essence of the love of God. Take some time to bathe in that love. God loves me because of who I am, and all my achievements have no bearing on that. Compassion is what helps us to bathe in love, independent of achievement. People truly bathed in love are compassionate to themselves and to others. The first person to feel the benefit of you bathing in the compassionate love of God is you, because you'll let yourself off the hook. You might say, maybe it wasn't my fault, and if it was my fault, it's okay, because it's happened and it's gone and it's done, but I'm still bathed in a compassionate love that says we move on. We move on this healing that begins to flow. And those who bathe in that compassionate love 
and who are compassionate to themselves are always compassionate to others. I would not like to have present my issues to me before they happened to me. Because my response would have been, it's all right, we're praying for you, bless you, God is with you. But when it happened to me, I realized something different. I realized his compassion to me. And as I based in that compassion and had compassion for me, now I can have compassion for others. Those are the people who truly know God. Those are the people who become one with him. And those are the people who become one with all of creation. God and everything working for us. I love one thing that Chris highlighted to me. She always says it takes me two years to catch up. (laughs) Isn't it interesting that we call this great thing the universe? The uni-verse. Uni meaning one, verse meaning a stanza. It's just one verse. We have been brought by the grace of God into something, a universe that is one verse. And that verse forever sings around us. And that verse is a verse of compassion that says, because of the Lord's great love, actually we aren't consumed. We're still here. You're still here. You're not consumed. For his compassions never fail. His womb doesn't miscarry. He's not the one in four. He never miscarries. Is, but they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I want you bathed in the compassion of God tonight. And out of that compassion, to give yourself some compassion. And then out of that compassion, to show the compassion to others. And in all that, to realize that there is healing and there is wholeness. Because you've now got the threefold cord that cannot be broken. Who needs a little compassion tonight? Who needs a bath? You know, the interesting thing is that baths do soak away a lot of stuff. Sometimes we need to soak away some stuff, and and I invite you to bathe in the love that is not measuring you on performance, success or failure. It's measuring you on the fact that that love knows exactly what you're going through, what has caused it, and how to help you walk that through to a place of total wholeness. There is healing for you, I believe, as you allow yourself to bathe in the loving compassion of a faithful God and to let that flow from your spirit into others. Let's just pray for one moment. Father, I pray for every soul in here tonight who in their anxiety and in their disappointment and in their frustration and in their disillusionment and in their misunderstandings are so troubled and so not at peace that tonight they will find the place to bathe in the love that does not measure on achievement or performance. A love that comes to us just because it is love. And I pray that in that for healing tonight. I pray for healing for hearts that have struggled even for months or for years or for decades. That the light begins to shine because there is an understanding of your compassionate love to us. That we can then have compassion on ourselves and as that flows out from us. That we come through back into the light of day into the new dawn. You said that the son of righteousness would rise over us with healing in his wings. I pray that for hearts and lives in here tonight and also pray for all of us that we will be compassionate people because of the compassion we have received. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, Amen, Georgia. So I hope you've learned a little bit tonight, okay? And we're done. We bless you. We love you.